Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> we welcome you back. No, we welcome you to a brand new year. We started on Sunday on January the 1st, but this is the first Wednesday night of a brand new year that the Lord has given us. Now, whether we will finish out this year on the face of the earth or not, that is all up to God. That's all up to God. Uh, some of us may go by death. Some of us may, we all may go by the rapture and praise the Lord if we do. This could be the year that we've all been working for and longing for all of our Christian lives to finally get to go be with Jesus. I, my sister is adamant that the Lord's coming soon. I mean, I mean, everybody says soon. She means today. That's what she's talking about. And I, the way things are, and the more you watch around what's going on in the world, the more I'm inclined to agree with her. The Bible says it'll get worse and worse before then, but you don't have much farther to go, it don't look to me like, but it's all in the hands of God. Welcome tonight to Deepwater Ministries. We thank, we thank you for taking time out to join with us and be with us. We want to go to the Lord in prayer as our first official Wednesday night prayer. We are praying for um, what do you say, Taylor? Uh, Taylor Cheatham uh, is with child. Um, she told me three names just before we started, and I'm trying to get them all remembered. My memory doesn't work very good anymore. Taylor Cheatham is with child, but she has also been diagnosed with cancer. Very young lady. Uh, very sweet lady, very nice lady, and we want nothing but her to be healed and that baby to be well. And we want daddy not to be too upset with everything that's going on around him. Just we pray that God would heal her and let her be, let her have a very healthy baby. Let the baby go to term and Everything be okay. She, I know she goes to the doctor, I believe, next week, back to the oncologist to find out. You said, well, Pastor, you tell a lot of personal information. Well, sometimes we need to get personal with God. So, God, we need a good report on that day. That day we need a good report. So, why not? I'm not ashamed to tell you of something going wrong with me. Because I will tell you flat out, because I want prayer for it. I, I expect God to, to heal me and deliver me. Lois Waterman is another one that needs our prayer tonight. Uh, still recovering from her back surgery. And as soon as she gets recovered from that, she gets blessed with a neck surgery. So, hey, Lois has got it going on. And uh, I know her doctor very well. Uh, he and I have shared many surgeries together, and maybe at one more. We don't know yet. We're trying to work that out now. Um, another person I'd ask you to pray for tonight, uh, you've never heard me mention his name before, but he's been a friend of mine for, gosh, at least 30-some years, maybe longer than that. Uh, Orville Garrison is his name. Orville is a uh, pastor friend of mine from Missouri. We pastored in the same town. We pastored. We've we've served on the same committees. We uh, we've argued. We fought. We've loved. We've hugged. We, we've done everything together. You know. We even went to a fellowship meeting one night on ice. It was the dumbest thing we probably ever did in our lives. We didn't know if we was going to get home. I tried three times to stop in his driveway and still didn't get it stopped. I just kind of had him jump out as I kept rolling because my brakes were locked up and I wasn't I was still going. It's a bad night. It was a bad night. Orwell, I hope you remember that one. But Orwell just had uh, cancer removed from his head, of all places. Now, Orwell has, he is the later years of his life, he's just one sickness after the other. But either God's not through with him here in this life or God doesn't want him in heaven. Now, that's just all there is to it. And Orville will be laughing right now because he's be watching this. Uh, stage four 
melanoma. They took off of his head, and we prayed that the Lord would heal him completely. No more cancer, no more sickness of any kind. Um, just let Orville and his lovely wife just be blessed, healed, made whole. Uh, they're retired now, and uh, let them enjoy what time they have left here in, on this earth and not worry about sickness, cancers, and things like this. Orville's heart, uh, his heart, we've always joked about it. They just kind of take it out of him every year and work on it and put it back in him. And uh, I know it's, 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 but it sounds like it when you talk to Orville. That's all they're doing. They take it out of him, they fix a few things, put it back in him. He just keeps going. Toughest man I ever met in my life. But he's a, he's a great servant of God. And we want him healed. We want him healed completely. So I thought she was talking about his cancer, not his heart. Orville's got more problems than most people could ever hope to live with. But he don't complain. He don't write. He just keeps right on doing what God would have him to do. In any capacity, God would have him do it. So, and the last one is Shirley Clifton. We pray for Miss Shirley. She's still having breathing trouble. Uh, it's getting better, but we want it. We want Miss Shirley to be completely well. So let's pray tonight and ask the Lord to bless all these people because he is more than able to meet the need that is in our lives. He is our healer. He is the one that, we always talk about God as the one who forgives us of our sins, but also he is our healer. Ultimately, all healing comes from God. So let's just give God the glory and pray tonight. Father, we thank you for each and every one of us tonight who have felt your touch and have been anointed by you at various times in our lives, maybe even been healed by you in our lives. But I do pray tonight for these particular ones. I ask that you would touch Miss Taylor and let her this, this cancer just be gone. Let it be gone. Take it out of her body. Take it out of her life. Let her not have that to worry about. Let her just enjoy the, if, if a woman can enjoy a pregnancy, let her have a good pregnancy and a very healthy baby. Bless the rest of the family as they go through this with Taylor. Help them all. Just trust in you and believe in you and know that you will see them through each and every situation in their lives. Bless them tonight. We pray for Miss Lois, that she's still recovering from her back surgery, and it will be quite lengthy recovery. And we know that unless you heal her, she's facing a neck surgery. So I ask first and foremost that you would heal her neck. Just whatever disc is blown out, whatever has been gone wrong, take it away from her and let her be completely made whole. Heal her body. She deserves some years of feeling good again. Bless her and make her completely well. We pray for Miss Shirley. We ask you, Lord, to bless her, heal her body. We ask that you would restore her breathing to 100%. We know she's getting better, but we ask you to restore her to 100%. Make her life whole and complete again. Let her not struggle to walk across the house. Just let her be blessed with all the lung capacity that she needs and all the oxygen that she needs to get her through and make her life worth living again. We ask you again tonight, Lord, for my friend Orville. Years, served you honorably, faithfully, and I ask that you would bless him tonight with healing, anointing, power over every sickness that comes against him. Lord, I don't know a part of his body that's not been attacked by the enemy, but I know that you brought him through each and every time. And I ask you to bring him through this also. We know what the doctor said. They think they got it all. But, we trust you to make sure that they got it all and that he be restored 100%. Bless, bless Sister Garrison as, as 
she watches over Orville and takes care of him, and he needs a lot of taking care of. We ask you to help us tonight here at, at Deepwater, just to reach into your word and draw from your, your anointing and your blessings into our lives and let us be a, better equipped to reach out and touch others as we go back into your word and learn and try to take it out to a world who so desperately needs the word of God in their lives. Not just as by words, but words really to live and to die by. We thank you and we praise you tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I told you Sunday, and, and I'm going to tell you one more time. I may tell you several more times. I don't know. But <clears throat> we're four short. Four short of that 400 goal of followers. I'm not talking about people that just watch us. We're four short of followers to make it to 400. Find, help me find four more people to follow us. Just help me find four more people. I'll shut up till we get close to 500. And then I'll open up on you again. But let's get to four. All we need is four. Four more followers. We get to 400. Master, you're being egotistical. Yes, I am. But in a godly way. We're reaching, we've got that many people that are watching us, following us. They may not watch us live, but they watch us sometime through the week. And they're paying attention because truly, we believe we are teaching them the truth, at least as much as we know it to be the truth. Instead of a watered down version, instead of something that just is drawn up to make people feel better. We try to teach the good, the bad, the ugly, and the glorious all throughout the Word of God. But we try to get you to grow in Jesus each and every day. So, four more people. We get 400. Let's do this tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy, we are told in our Bible schools, in our colleges, in our universities, in our programs, that 2 Timothy is the last letter the Apostle Paul ever wrote. Well, if that's so, why isn't it in the back of the book? Well, the Bible is not always in chronological order either. You ever seen a chronological Bible? They're hard to read. They're very hard to read. But, 2 Timothy is the last letter that the Apostle Paul ever wrote before his execution. He was beheaded for one reason and one reason only, being a servant of the Lord. And he stirred up the government, and the government didn't like it. So, the Paul's final instructions to his protege, Timothy was a hand-picked protege, by the way, right. was for Timothy to continually stir up, right. agitate, disturb, wake up the gift that was in him. Now, the gift that was in him was the infilling of God's Holy Spirit. The Spirit that will walk with us, teach us, and comfort us each and every day as we walk through this life. Paul understood that it wasn't enough just to receive this gift. It was also necessary that this gift must stay active, stirred, agitated, woke up, and continually refreshed in our lives. Paul was saying that Timothy was personally responsible. Personally responsible. What did I say? Personally responsible for keeping God's gift stirred up and alive, active in his life. Read this with me. This is this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. 
I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, and as my forefathers did, as without ceasing. I remember you in my prayers, night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being made mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, mm -hmm. and I am persuaded is in you also. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And all I'm going to read is one more verse. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, Paul was saying that Timothy was personally responsible for keeping God's gift, the Holy Spirit, in him, stirred up and active each and every day of his life. It was Timothy's responsibility to keep the fire burning. He was the keeper, in other words, of his own flame. Too many people are relying on other people to keep them excited in the Lord. Too many people are relying on others to get them enthusiastic about God or enthusiastic about prayer or enthusiastic about reading the Word of God. No, it's all about what's in you, what's in me. I am responsible for myself. And that's one thing this world does not teach anymore, personal responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault. It's not somebody else's fault if the fire that is within you goes out and ceases to burn. God has given each and every one of us a spirit that is not given into fear, that is not given into worry, but it is a spirit of power, love, and even of a sound mind. Well, in my case, two out of three ain't bad. The most important thing that can happen in anyone's life, anyone's life, is to meet the Lord Jesus Christ and to have their sins forgiven by asking him to forgive them of their sins. That you might become a child of God who is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and to have your name written down in the Lamb's book of life and to know that Christ lives in your heart and you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how religious you are. The Bible says you must be born again. It doesn't matter how well you know the Bible or what the church you belong or which church you belong to. You must be born again. It doesn't matter how good or decent a person you are. You must be born again. John chapter 3, look at verse 3. Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see this kingdom of God. And there was a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night. Why did he come to him by night? He didn't want the other Pharisees to know that he was talking to Jesus. Nicodemus, though he might have been a little afraid of his peers, he was a very smart man, and he listened to Jesus. He listened to everything he had to say. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel at I said to you, you must be born again. A lot of people have trouble with that. I don't have any trouble with it. I understand it completely. My life changed. When I gave my heart, my life, my soul, my everything over to Jesus, my life changed. But once you've been born again, once you become that new creation in Christ Jesus, the most important thing that can happen to your life is happen in your life is to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, right here before you shut me off, listen to me. Listen to what I got to say. A lot of people have trouble with this right here. 
A lot of people, oh, he's going to talk about speaking in tongues or something else. That's what we get by fooling with one of these Pentecostal churches. And for those of you that don't know it, we at Deepwater are Pentecostal. But, but, John the Baptist said in Matthew chapter 3, and I'll finish my statement here. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's John the Baptist. Way before Jesus' time. Because Jesus came to John the Baptist to have me baptized. Jesus believed the baptism of the Holy Spirit was so important that he commanded his disciples to not leave Jerusalem until they had received this Holy Spirit fire baptism. Jesus, before he ascended back into heaven, after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, and before he ascended back into heaven, he said, you tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And they did. And he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. It'd be like saying, your hometown, your state, your country, and all the world. Then we find in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they, the 120 faithful that were still left, all the rest of them turned their back on Jesus and ran away. The multitudes ran away, but except this 120. Well, the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, they were all in one accord. How do you get 120 people in that Honda? Mm -hmm. Accord. Honda. Mm -hmm. What a crowd. What a night. When they were all in one accord, with one accord, in one place, and suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them, and I want you to pay attention to this, divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. One set upon each of them. Listen to that. One set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, right there is where people shut it off. They said, I don't want to know anything about this, this tongue thing. I don't want, I don't even believe in it. I don't want to know about it. I'm not going to talk to you about tongues tonight. I'm not going to talk to you about speaking in tongues. Take that part out. I'm going to teach you about the rest of it. They were divided tongues of fire and one set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Stop right there. You stop there. Why is the Holy Spirit and fire so important in the lives of the Christian? This is God's supernatural equipping to us that we might be better equipped to carry on the ministry of Jesus. Well, what was the ministry of Jesus? Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost, and he came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, Jesus' ministry, even after 2,000 years, has never changed. It has never changed. Now, we are to continue with the same ministry during our time here on the earth. The book of Acts is really the diary and the record of the New Testament church and even our church today in its infancy. It is a record of the Holy Spirit operating through yielded vessels, that being the lives of whomsoever the Holy Spirit was allowed into. And remember that the book of Acts is the pattern for the New Testament church of today. Signs, wonders, miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why do we pray if we don't expect miracles? Why do we pray for these people if we don't expect God to heal them? That's a miracle if he does. Well, I, I just pray because we're, supposed, we're told to pray. Were well, you supposed to believe in miracles? You have to. Signs, wonder, miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, all these type things, fruits of the Spirit, all this stuff. 
are even today the defining characteristics of the New Testament church, or the modern-day Christian. In other words, the New Testament church, the modern-day Christian, acted just like Jesus. They healed the sick, they cast out devils, they performed signs and wonders, and miracles, and manifested the gifts of the Spirit, all by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if there's one thing we need in our churches or even in our lives today, especially individually, it is a fresh anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Notice, I didn't even touch on speaking in other tongues. We're going to leave that out for another time. We will get there eventually, but not tonight. What we need, and what I'm talking about tonight, is all we all need a Holy Ghost invasion. We need God to crash our church services. We need God to crash in the, the hardened hearts of our lives. We need a divine interruption is what we need. We need the Holy Spirit to show up like he did in that upper room, suddenly and supernaturally, undeniable and indisputable like he did in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 verse 29 says, Now look, now Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. And by stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Again, what they do? They spoke, they were filled with the Spirit, and spoke the word of God with boldness. That's a Holy Spirit invasion. All right. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same word. The word is pneuma. It means the same thing. You can look it up in Greek. You can look it up anything else. The word's pneuma. Ghost, uh, wind, uh, spirit. It's going to be pneuma. How do I know that? I got a book. Oh, yes. I have read books way before we had computers. They even had to go to school without books, without computers. Some of you just got the shakes. You can't even imagine sitting watching TV without a computer in your lap, or at least a phone app that you can play a game at during the same time. But what I'm talking about here, the place was shaken, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. That's a Holy Spirit invasion. And that's what we need. It's what we need today in our lives. While the rest of the world is all jumped in that handbasket and going to you know where. And if you don't understand that, you've really missed out on most of life. It's what we need today. Something that originates from heaven and something that will shake us up. Something that will wake us up, stir us up, and something that will set us on fire for God. We need God to interrupt our saying by his doing. Just like when Peter was preaching at Cornelius' house. The Bible says the Holy Spirit fell on all of them that heard his word. While Acts chapter 10, whilst Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Now, the Holy Spirit didn't wait for Peter to finish his sermon. He just fell on those people and interrupted everything. That's all right if God's doing the interrupting. You don't have to wait till the end of the service to receive anything from God. You don't have to wait till the phones go off and the computers get shut down to receive something from God. You can be saved right now. Saved is just another word we use to be, to mean forgiven of your sins. Saved from the fires of hell. What? Life jacket of Jesus God being killed for our sins, to buy us back, the perfect ransom paid to buy mankind back unto the glory of God. You can be healed right now. You don't have to wait till we're done. You can be delivered from whatever aggravation, from whatever worry, from whatever sickness, from whatever that's bothering you right now. You can even receive a breakthrough in your life that gets you past the point that you're that stagnant place you're in right now 
and moves you on into the rushing waters of deep water and gets you out where God wants you to be. Everything you need is found in the Holy Spirit. I started this with Paul's words to Timothy, but it might, he might as well have been speaking to all of us. He said, stir up the gift that is in you. If there's anything missing in our churches or in our personal lives today, it is the energy, the life, the vitality, the fire, the power, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We can blame the world as being our problem. We can blame the atmosphere around us. But the truth is, we can't blame anyone. Why? We are keepers of our own flame. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, every head got a flame. What did I read to you a while ago? What, and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. What if there had been 121? They would have had 121 with fire on their heads. What if it had been 122? They'd have had 122. God's not short. He doesn't run out. God's storehouse is, is you can't empty it. There's no back orders with God. You can't do it. But we have to be keepers of our own flame. God gives us the faith and the anointing to be saved. But what we do with that depends upon us. That's why the Holy Spirit in our lives, Jesus said, that's why, that's why the Holy Spirit is, is so important in our lives. You remember Jesus saying, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans or comfortless, whichever version you have. But I will send another. Again, the Greek word is paraclete. One who stands beside or walks beside. One to strengthen you. I will send another comforter just like me. Comforter. The one who walks beside me, strengthens me, gives me courage, pushes me forward, and keeps the fire of God ever burning in my life. But, but... If I don't keep my own flame lit and well agitated, that flame can go out. And the ashes of what used to be can smother the embers till there's nothing left but cold ash. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, every head got a flame. It was a personal gifting. That means that every person is responsible to keep their own fire burning. We must, as Paul said, stir up the gift that is in us. And the first step to stirring up the flame is to remove anything that is flame resistant. That means get rid of anything that is offensive or a restraint to the Holy Spirit living in us, around us, and through us every day of our lives. And start seeking the Lord with all your heart. Pray more. Start spending more time worshiping God, more time just loving God. Start spending more time reading his word and meditating on his word. We have to stir up the gift. God gave us the fire. He gave us the power. He gave us the anointing. But it all boils down to are we going to stir up the gift? Anybody that grew up or was ever around a wood furnace or a wood stove, you know that unless you shake the ashes down and get them out of the way and throw fresh wood in on the fire, that the fire is just going to go out and smother itself under the heap of ash that is in there. But if you can get that ash out of the way, that's flame resistance. It's already been burned up and used. And throw fresh fuel on the, excuse me, throw fresh fuel in on the fire. The things start to turn around immediately and start working for God's good and his glory, for your good and his glory. In. There is an anointing in you. There is a fire in you. I'm telling you straight up, it may be low. It may just be a flicker. It may even seem like at times it's gone out. But if you will stir the ashes up a little bit with a little bit of prayer, a little bit of reading God's word, a little bit of trusting God, a little bit of talking to God every now and then, if you'll stir up those ashes, the wind of the Spirit will begin to blow again, and the fire will come alive in you. That's what Paul was saying when he told Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you, the gift of power, the gift of anointing, 
the gift of blessing, the gifts of all kinds of things, but mostly the gift to go out and tell the world Jesus saves. That's what it's really all about. Everybody else gets caught up on these, all, all, on these trivial matters. It's all about winning souls to Jesus and then getting them to live right according to God's word. There's so much bad interpretation of God's word today. And I don't, I don't know how they do it. I just don't know how they do it. God's word is so simple. Now, granted, there are passages in it that we don't understand even today. And don't let anybody fool you when they start talking about some of the things found in, in Ezekiel or Daniel or even at the last of Revelation. Oh, I know everything that's being said. No, they don't. They're lying. They are lying. But the, the parts that we need to make it through this life and empower for us to win others to the cause of Christ are so simple. So simple that any child can do it. Any child can do it. But we have to stir up the gift. A personal gifting. I love that. Each head got a flame. Each head got a flame. You got a flame. But are you stirring it up? Are you constantly deleting the things that are Going to smother the flame? Let too much debris build up on that? That's just ashes of yesterday's gone by? Oh, but years ago we used to have such great church services. What about today? We got the same God. We got the same Savior. We got the same Holy Spirit. What's the difference? Us. We're the difference. Nobody wants to stir up the gift anymore. Well, I'm afraid what brother better than you or sister better than you might say. Do you really care? If I was if if I was ever afraid of what brother and sister better than you might say in, in church or anywhere else about me, I'd have never made it this far. Because I'm the one that's always stubborn enough to just kind of dare them to say something to me. And then I'd go tell my wife and let her deal with it. That's Aww. scary right there. Aww. That's a fact. She scares me. And I ain't afraid of anything. All right. We have to stir up our own gift. We know that. If you are born again, there is an anointing in you. There's a flame in you. We can't afford to let that fire go out. We're too close to the end. Jesus is coming. And he's coming very, very soon. So we need to stir up the gift that is in us. Therefore, I remind you, verse 6, first, or 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. When Paul had laid hands on him and prayed for him, he received this gift. He received that gift. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you have to have somebody lay hands on you to receive this Fire of the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life and in your soul? Nope. All you got to do is get with God. All you got to do is get with God. But Paul was there and he'd probably been preaching. Timothy had been listening and he reached over and grabbed Timothy by the shoulder and said, Don't you want to? Yes, I do. Boom. He got it. He was ready to roll. And Timothy was someone that never turned his back on Paul. Never, never turned his back on him. We can't afford to let the fire go out. We're too close to the end. It's time for us to stir up the gift that is within us. Time for us to wake up our calling, wake up our destiny, wake up our anointing, and wake up our fire. I want you to think of it this way. Your car. Your car. Your truck, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big the engine is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how high performance the engine is set up to be. If the battery is dead, it won't run. You can have the finest racing engine and more power than you can even hope to ever use. But if that little square box is dead, so is that high-performance engine. It won't run.
So what do you do? You can do one of two things. You can put a new battery in it, or you can hook a set of jumper cables up from somebody else's power and start yours. That's what we're talking about right here. We're letting the Holy Spirit jumpstart our lives and cause the high-performance Christian that is within us come alive and start running again for the glory of God. It doesn't matter how much destiny that is in you or how many gifts or, or callings are in you. Unless they are activated by the Holy Spirit, they are in effect dead. When you are activated, you can activate others. When you are on fire for God, you can release that fire into other people. Well, how? All you have to do is walk by them with a spirit that is different than the rest of the world. One that sees hope instead of just all bad things. One that sees joy instead of sorrow. One that sees life instead of death. One that sees victory instead of defeat in all things. Now, deep water swimmers know that if we stir up God's gift that is within us, if we reactivate God's holy fire that is within us, then wherever we go, wherever we go, we can distribute that fire in the lives of everyone we come in contact with. And it will make such a huge difference in this world because you'd be surprised how many people you come in contact with when you're just simply trying to be the Christian that God wants you to be. And you have that gift stirred up in you so much that you just got to release it and let it go. Stir up the gift that is, that is within you and see what a difference it makes, not only in your life, but also in the lives of others. Could be the lives of those that you love the most, the ones closest to you. But stir up your gift first. And that way you can activate the power in the other people's lives. You're the jump power and fires them up. All you got to do is keep your gift stirred up in the fire burning. That's it. That's how simple it is. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings of the Holy Spirit. No, we didn't go completely into it, but Lord, we went to where we, where we thought you wanted us to go tonight by activating the power that you have placed within us to tell the world that Jesus saves. Activate within us the anointing that tells us to go forth teaching the world about the, the love and the mercy and the grace of Almighty God. Giving us power to go forth telling the world that they too must be born again. And then continually stir up the gift that is within them that they might live a life that is pleasing to God in everything that they do. Father, help us tonight. Just be continually checking on our own fire, stirring up the gifts that are within us, the blessings that are within us, that we might share the heat and the glow of your glory with everyone we come in contact with. And we thank you for that power, and we ask you to release it in us and through us, in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. Thank you for being here at Deepwater tonight. Thank you for taking the time out of your lives to just open up God's word and hopefully it was able to teach you something about this fire that we all, all Christians have, but many Christians refuse to ever let be turned loose in their lives. Turn it loose and let it go. God will do the rest. We love you. We thank you. Find us four more followers. Help us. We need your help. Share it. Share deep water. Like deep water. We ask you, all you get is hit a couple of buttons. One more thing. One more thing I'm going to do. We're starting the new year off with it. And I'm going to get this wrong. I'll turn this camera around and let Miss Teresa do this. But I guarantee you she'll be telling me what I'm said wrong. On your page, on your Facebook page, is a little designation place called Amazon Smile? 
on Amazon. Oh, on Amazon. Those of you that order from Amazon, that's where it's at. Which of you don't order from Amazon? Some of you ordered a million dollars worth of stuff already this year. Well, if you go to the Amazon page, there's a place on it called Amazon Smile on the order page. On that, it costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. But Amazon, if you put in Deep Water Ministries and all of our information, which is right there on your Facebook page, Amazon will re-gift to us a portion. Now, granted, it's a small portion. Half of 1%. Half of 1%. You don't have to, but, put, you don't have to put in anything but check Deep Water in Robinson. That's all check Deep Water in, in Robinson, Texas. That's it. And half of 1% of everything you buy will come to deep water and we will use it to enhance the ministry that we can reach even more people. That's all we're asking you to do. Costs you nothing but a little bit of time to start this off. You order from Amazon tomorrow, look for that. It's Amazon Smile. They give one half of 1%. Pastor, that's not enough to worry about. It is when 400 people are doing it. And I guarantee you there's probably 400 right now ordering from Amazon while you're watching me preach or whatever you call what I do. What I do. <laughs> Amazon smile. That's all I got to say about That's all I got to say about that. We'll see you Sunday morning, 930 for breakfast. Hey, it's coming. The music's coming. I'm telling you it's coming. You're going to be blessed here just... February, you got to give me get through January and we'll be ready. Let me get through January. We got to learn how to use some equipment. That's going to be the major thing. We got to go to school again, but we're going to, it's, it, oh, it's that close to being here. Trouble is not any of it coming from Amazon. <laughs> and it's only because of your giving to deep water. Have we been able to do this? And you will like, I think you will like the music when we get it going. It and will video. be, huh? And video. and video. Music and video. It will be here. It will be ready to go just as soon as we get the band back together. We're on a mission from God. <laughs> we'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you all.